The United Nations says nuclear power plants around the world must strengthen their safety standards. The recommendation is part of the UN's new report following its analysis of the accident at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi. A number of UN organizations worked together to compile the document, including the International Atomic Energy Agency and the World Health Organization. The report blames the accident at Fukushima Daiichi on the plant's design. It says the owner of the facility based its plan on port hazard assessment of natural disasters. The UN says an international emergency response framework should be set up to deal with nuclear accidents so human health and food safety can be secured. It also wants to create a global system to allow the International Atomic Energy Agency to monitor radiation levels. The United Nations report goes on to stress the importance of nuclear power as well. It says a peaceful use of atomic energy will help improve the lives of 2.4 billion people in developing countries who lack electricity. The United Nations is holding a high-level meeting on nuclear safety and security on September 22nd in New York. Well, the world's population is projected to hit 7 billion on October 31st, and the UN is calling for global efforts to address poverty and inequality. Secretary General Pan Ki-moon was speaking at a ceremony to launch the initiative Seven Billion Actions at UN headquarters in New York on Wednesday. It is a challenge, an opportunity, and a call to action for all of us to confront grinding poverty and inequality. The United Nations is staging various events around the world in the lead-up to October 31st to raise awareness of the population problem. UN figures indicate the world's population is projected to surge past 9 billion before 2050 and reach 10.1 billion by the end of the century if current fertility rates continue. Fertility estimations, the risks of fertility, because uh, in Japan they have, um, they are, they will, their fertility will be affected as well, as it was in the uh, Middle East now. You, you heard about that study in, in Jerusalem, yeah? Yes, yes. So, and, and he's doing yeah. some, he's doing some interesting uh, mm -hmm. research, mm -hmm. uh, design. No, just, 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 just give, this is much more important, one, because one you, everybody can become infertile in one generation. One sound bite, okay. one sound bite. I should say something about Fukushima and also Chernobyl, but certainly now Fukushima and infertility. The, the, the truth is that infertility has been in, uh, increasing in the world for the last 30 or 40 years, probably because of all the radionuclides that, are that people are exposed to originally from the weapons fallout uh, and the global atmospheric testing, and then from Chernobyl, and now from Fukushima. And there are things that people there can do to, to try and minimize, minimize this. Uh, but the main thing is to get away from the radiation, but, and because they, what they have to realize is that this, this is an invisible, uh, it's an invisible attack on, on the human race. It's something that will, it will appear over the next 20, 30, 40 years, and, and its cause will not really be investigated. So we also predict, I also predict, on, uh, as a result of this ECRR model, that there will be significant increases in infertility in Japan as a result of this accident and this is quite terrible and in, any, in many ways it's more terrible than the cancer in adults because it's, it, it's destroying children who, who could have been born but now will not be born and some of those who are going to be born from our studies in the Middle East will have horrifying deformities and, and will obviously in an advanced uh, country like Japan will be aborted uh, 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 you know, um, uh, clinically, clinically aborted before they get born, so the, the birth rate will fall. Uh, what did the data show until now, before Fukushima? Oh yes, the the data has been showing that um, that the birth rate, uh, that the that the the, the the sperm count in men has has been falling drastically. Uh, there was a very important study done in Jerusalem a few years ago which showed that Israeli men had, had very low sperm count and that over the previous 10 years it had fallen by a significant amount. And the, and the authors of that study said that if it continued to fall at the same rate by the year 2020, that they would be totally infertile and the Israelis would, would have no more children. It's as bad as that. 
It's as bad as that. And we are, so we're, we're now, as a result of Fukushima, introducing a huge load more of this stuff into the atmosphere. But I have to say that it will mostly affect the Japanese, as far as I can tell. It will mostly be a Japanese affair, but that doesn't make it any better. And where does the radiation come in Israel? Come from in Israel? In Israel, it comes from the uh, use of, of uranium weapons. The massive, massive, massive use of uranium weapons by the uh, by the various military um, invaders, I suppose you would call them, the U.S., the, the, the Allies, they call them, uh, used hundreds and maybe thousands of tons of uranium weapons. Um, there's a new weapon now which uses uranium, and we've made measurements in the hair of the mothers in Fallujah, uh, and uh, mothers of children with congenital anomalies. Uh, and this study hasn't been published yet, but what we have found is significant man-made uranium in the hair of these mothers, which is pro almost certainly the cause of the congenital anomalies. And where you have congenital anomalies, of course, you also have infertility. It's just that with, with the, in Fallujah, they, they don't have sufficient uh, medical methodology to, 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 to pick up these, these uh, deformities before they're born. They don't have all the ultrasound stuff and so on, but in the West they probably find these things and abort them early. So that's why we have these big increases. But the increases are associated with an environmental exposure to uranium. That's the point. And, and you have to remember that Fukushima contains probably 2,000 tons of uranium. 2,000 tons. Chernobyl had 200 tons, and 50 tons of it exploded. So, it, so all the things that Alexei Yablokov is talking about is a consequence of two, uh, 50 tons of uranium in Europe with a bit of with fission products, of course. But in Fukushima, there's more than that. There's, in principle, if the whole lot goes up, it's, it's a massive amount of uranium. And are there some uh, long-term consequences after 20, of 30 years, 40 years? Uh, it doesn't go away. What, 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 what Alexei says is true. It doesn't go away. Um, what Rosa Goncharova showed here in her talk, when she was studying the bank voles, the little animals that live in the Chernobyl zone, was that, that once you irradiate these, these, these creatures, and also human beings, Dubrova has shown this, you, you initiate a, pro a process called genomic instability. And then this is, this is like th throwing a switch. And what it does is it increases the genetic mutation rate, uh, quite apart from any mutation that the uranium causes or, or the radiation causes. That's a separate thing. This is like an automatic switch that is thrown at quite low doses. And then you pass this switch on to your children and they pass it on to their children and so on. And then with the bank rolls, uh, I know that they've studied the bank rolls and found that 22 generations have still got this switch. Now, I've studied the nuclear test veterans. Uh, these, are, these are the men who work for the British army uh, at the nuclear tests in the Pacific in the, in the 60s and uh, I studied their children and their grandchildren and what we found was that the children of these test veterans, this is the British, British Nuclear Test Veteran Association, have about a, ten, a nine-fold excess of congenital malformations but the extraordinary thing is that the grandchildren also have an eight-fold excess of congenital malformations so the normal genetic idea that you you pick off the weak and then it goes down and then you get the strong and eventually, you know, this is the old nuclear idea of the, of the nuclear war. All the, we, we just have radiation resistant people who survive. It's just not true. What happens is that it throws a big switch and everybody is affected. And it's, you're affected for generations and generations. So it's, it doesn't even matter if the uranium goes away. It doesn't matter if these radionuclides all decay. Because you've imprinted something on the human genome which is there forever. That's the danger. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Thank you also. Yeah. The World Bank has warned the global economy will reach a dangerous level unless industrialized countries take swift action to fix their economic problems. World Bank President Robert Zelik made the remark at a lecture in Washington on Wednesday. The global economy has entered a new danger zone with little running room as European countries resist difficult truths about the common responsibilities of a common currency. Zelik said the Eurozone countries are irresponsible as they have not been able to work together to resolve the credit crisis, the current credit crisis, triggered by the Greek debt problem. Zelik called on the countries sharing the common euro currency to act promptly to tackle the crisis. The chief of the World Bank also said Japan has resisted structural economic and social reforms, while the United States is facing record peacetime deficits with no approach in sight for cutting its debt. 
Zelik warned that the global economy will be dragged down unless Japan, the U.S. and European countries face up to their responsibilities and solve their problems. Hey guys, I got a comment about this uh, on the EU Times on uh, September 14th yesterday. It's kind of interesting. I uh, don't know much about this newspaper. You guys check it out. Uh, it says Obama order to Denver bunker by U.S. military. I'm going to scroll down this. Um, it would really probably be better if you go to the uh, EUtimes.com. You could read it for yourself. It goes down and shows Obama here. It says a disturbing report prepared by General Alexis Maslov, the senior military representative of the permanent mission of Russia to NATO, states that he has been notified by the Americans of their plan to hold a DEFCON 1 cock pistol maximum readiness alert drill on 27th of September. That's real strange. You know, that's the uh, alignment date with Elliman. And uh, I just want to point this out. It's going to be a short video. You guys check this out. The U.S. Space Agency has unveiled plans to build a rocket that would carry astronauts to Mars and other planets. NASA expects the first unmanned test flight will lift off in six years. NASA says the project will cost $10 billion. The rocket is likely to be about 100 meters long, though its actual size has not been revealed. Sources say the technology of the main engine and external fuel tanks of the decommissioned space shuttle would be used in the new rocket. They say that would hold down costs and lead to the employment of engineers who worked on space shuttle projects. Last year, President Barack Obama announced plans to send astronauts to Mars in the 2030s, despite severe fiscal conditions.